In this video, I want to discuss emotion as it relates particularly to interpersonal communication. So, first of all, let's discuss what is an emotion. What do we mean when we say emotion? Well, emotions are your body's multidimensional response to any event that either enhances or inhibits your goals. So, uh, just to clarify a few things here. First, we want to, we're going to discuss the idea that emotions are multidimensional. That they have more than one dimension that we react to them and, and have different responses in, in a variety of ways. So we're going to discuss how our body responds multidimensional. Second, we want to point out that emotions are related to an event. They have a trigger event. They're not just something that, that happens and builds up within, within us. They have something that precipitates them, an event that causes that emotion. And then that emotions can either enhance or inhibit your goals. They'll either help you achieve the goal or keep you from achieving your goal, make that more difficult for you to achieve that goal. So uh, with that in mind, um, a question for you. What is the difference between an emotion and a mood? That's, that's, uh, those are two terms that we use a lot interchangeably, but really they're different things. Emotions, as we've talked about, first of all, are precipitated by a specific event. They, they're triggered by something. Moods are not. They, they tend to just kind of descend upon us for whatever reason. They're not necessarily triggered by anything in particular. It just could be a matter of literally waking up on the wrong side of the bed, as, as the saying goes. So um, another big difference between emotion and mood is that emotions tend to be um, shorter in length. Moods tend to draw out a little longer and linger a little longer than emotions do. Um, so there are differences between emotions and moods, and we want to be careful to distinguish between those things. So Given that, emotions then are easy to express and interpret, right? Well, not necessarily. You tell me, what emotion is this young lady experiencing right now? What's she feeling right now? Well, it could be a variety of things, right? Some, in some ways, it could be awe or wonder. Uh, but it may also usually be confusion, or maybe that she's getting ready to laugh and experiencing joy or humor in some way. So we don't really know. Emotions uh, are not necessarily easy to interpret and express. So we want to talk a little more about that. As I mentioned, emotions are multidimensional. They affect us in a variety of ways, and we express them in a variety of ways. So let's take a look at some of those. First, emotions are uh, physiological. They, they encounter and encumber physiological changes. So when we experience an emotion, we may, as you see in this picture, experience uh, in, an increase in sweating, an increase in body temperature, an increase in heart rate, uh, heart rate uh, or all these different things. Uh, we may experience dry mouth and things that, that affect our body in some way. So emotions can bring on these physiological changes. Now, what does it mean when your body temperature increases, or your heart rate increases, or you start to get a little sweaty in different places? Uh, well, that's harder to interpret, right? Because those could be symptomatic of fear, could also be symptomatic of love, could be uh, symptomatic of anger. So, um, so there are a variety of ways that these physiological changes could be attached to different emotions, and that's something we need to interpret a little later. But we know that emotions do involve a variety of physiological changes. We'll experience a variety of physiological changes when we experience an emotion. We also have nonverbal reactions that are part of uh, emotion, right? So we express ourselves nonverbally. It may be through if we're, if we're scared of something. It may be, as you see in John Candy's face here, fear and, and that expression of, of uh, uh, fear. Uh, but we express ourselves also through smiling and through uh, gesturing in different ways. And, and we have all these different nonverbal reactions that, that, that we experience when we have a strong emotional reaction as well. Cognitive interpretations are a critical part of emotion. Because, as I've said, some of this is really ambiguous, right? What does it mean when we start sweating and our heart rate increases and so forth? You know, it could be love. It could be fear. Uh, it could be a lot of different things, right? So um, so cognitive interpretations have to do with how we interpret those different changes, how we interpret our physiological changes, and how we interpret the situation or in general, and how we interpret that emotion and how we feel about that. So we could then kind of cognitively, cognitively um, process that emotion and determine, you know, what is it that I'm experiencing here and how do I respond to that? How should I feel about that? Uh, and so we identify um, different ideas to different, sometimes correctly and sometimes incorrectly, because again, this is a matter of interpretation, but, but we have these strong cognitive interpretations that kind of lead us toward um, where we're going with this emotion. And then finally, we have verbal expression as well. We express ourselves verbally through emotion. I love you. I'm angry with you. Um, do, I don't like that. I'm upset right now. I'm, you know, all these different types of words that we can use to express our emotions. And so we need to identify those through verbal expression as well. So really all of these things combined, though, go into emotion. So you can see that emotion is not just some funny feeling you get in your stomach and that's an emotion. No, 
emotions are multidimensional. They have an impact on our body physiologically. They have an impact and response through our nonverbal reactions, through our cognitive interpretations, and through our verbal expression. All of those things are in play when we talk about experiencing and expressing an emotion. So uh, the nature of emotion, let's talk about some of the basic principles of emotion and, and how this impacts us. So emotions vary in valence, meaning positively, positivity or negatively, and intensity. So when we talk about emotions varying in valence, we're talking about whether this is a positive emotion uh, or a negative emotion. So again, we, we said early on in our definition that emotions are something that help us either achieve our goals or keep us from achieving those goals. So uh, an uh, emotion with positive valence would be something that would uh, help us to achieve our goals and, and have a positive impact on us. An emotion that had negative valence would be the opposite, would help, would keep us from getting to our goals and have a negative impact on what we're trying to accomplish. Now, it's easy to say, it would be easy to say that, uh, you know, our wonderful emotions like love and joy and uh, things like that are positive in valence and that, that, uh, that you know, anger, uh, disgust, things like that are negative in valence, but it's really not that simple. Any emotion could have either a positive or negative valence, depending on the impact it has on helping you achieve or uh, keeping you from achieving your goal. So could anger be a positive emotion? Sure, yeah, if you're being attacked by a bear and experiencing anger, and that anger gives you adrenaline to help fight off that bear attack or run away from that bear or whatever you need to do, then that anger has had a positive effect, right? So it would be a positive valence. And, and just like that, you know, if you're experiencing an emotion in one direction and you know experiencing love and it's keeping you from from eating and being productive in your life in other ways that could potentially be a, a negative valence right so any emotion has the potential to be positive or negative in valence depending on whether or not it helps you achieve or keeps you from achieving your goals uh, and then we talk about emotions varying in intensity um, so let's go back to that idea of anger um, again, a football player may experience some anger. It may help that per that player get uh, psyched up for a game. It may help them, you know, perform better in the game uh, with a little bit of anger. But that anger needs to be in check, right? When that anger gets to the point where it's causing that person to try and uh, cause harm to another player or, or hurt another player on the other team, then it's exceeded its intensity. Or if that anger carries over after the game and causes that person to to do things that are damaging. After the game, then that anger has built in intensity and, 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 and sustained long enough that it's become a negative valence. So, um, so we need to keep emotions in the proper intensity as well. We need to view them in that light as well. So emotions will vary in valence and intensity, and we need to be aware of that. Emotions also come in primary and secondary forms. Almost like when you were in elementary school, you had the, the color wheel, right? And you learned that there are primary colors, and then there are secondary colors that are made from mixing those primary colors, right? Well, emotions exist in primary and secondary forms as well. You have some primary uh, core emotions, and then you have other emotions that are kind of a combination of those things. So, for example, this is just one example of a, an emotional sort of color wheel showing primary and, and uh, secondary emotions. So if we look at anger and disgust, though, those are more primary emotions that when you combine the two of them, you get contempt. Looking down on someone, when you combine anger and disgust, you end up with contempt as a secondary emotion then as a combination of those two primaries. So, uh, so emotions do uh, exist in primary and secondary forms. There are a, a lot of different places where emotions come from. These are just some of the different influences on emotional expression. Partly comes from our personality, just kind of who we are, and what our person, natural personality is. Uh, also comes from our culture. How we express and process emotion will vary from culture to culture. Uh, westernized uh, individualistic cultures tend to be more expressive in their emotion whereas uh, collectivistic cultures tend to be more, a little more repressive in their emotion just in order to keep the balance and keep the, the status quo among the group, whereas you know, individualized cultures aren't worried about that. It's more about expressing ourselves individually, regardless of how it impacts the collective, right? So, again, not, I'm not saying any of that in the sense of better one is better or worse than the other, but they are different. Cultures do impact our emotional expression in that way. Gender is much the same way we've been socialized to experience and express emotions in, in a variety of ways and, and process those emotions in different ways. So you do see some differences, broadly speaking, in the way that genders uh, handle emotional expression. Uh, with social conventions and roles, social media will impact our emotional expression. Of course, the disinhibition effect causes us in social media to be a little more... Uh, brave when we're behind a screen to express ourselves in positive and negative ways than it would be uh, otherwise. So uh, the idea of an emotional contagion, that emotions can be spread, is a very real thing. Um, so that will be an impact on our emotional expression. And then just in general, our overall emotional intelligence. 
the way that we uh, handle those emotions. Uh, and Aristotle once said that uh, the translation here is that anybody can become angry. That is easy. But to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose and in the right way, that is not within everyone's power. And it is not easy. So, yeah, exactly what he just says here. Anybody can experience a particular emotion, but can you experience it properly and effectively? That's the real question. A few guidelines for expressing emotion here. First of all, choose the best language. Uh, again, we have verbal responses to emotion, and, and we need to be careful in, in choosing our language and, and choose the language that accurately represents where we're at. If you're, if you're really, really furious with somebody, don't just say, well, I'm a little upset with you. Tell them, I'm furious with you. Or if you're not, then say, I'm upset. Or, you know, we have these different degrees of expression. English is a wonderful language, and, and most languages have these different degrees of expression that we can choose our language for expressing emotion. We can also do better in recognizing our feelings. We need to do more to, um, to identify what our feelings are through that cognitive interpretation and through recognizing the different things that are happening with us. We need to do a better job of recognizing what, what, what emotions we are experiencing in that moment. We also need to become better at sharing multiple feelings. It's very rare for us to just experience one emotion at a time. And so if we're experiencing multiple things, then we can express those multiple things. If a friend of yours said they were going to be at your house at 8 o'clock, and they're not there, and they're not there, and they're not there, and finally at 3 in the morning they show up, you're going to be feeling a variety of things. You're going to be feeling, first of all, angry that they didn't show up on time, you know, concerned because they didn't call you. You're going to be happy that they're there. You're going to be relieved that nothing bad happened to them, right? So you can express all of those things. Don't feel like you're locked into just expressing one thing. When you're experiencing multiple emotions, you can express those multiple emotions. But then finally, recognize the difference between feeling and acting. Just because we're feeling something doesn't necessarily mean we need to react and act upon that emotion immediately. Sometimes we need time to process and think about what the best way to respond to that is and, and not just react emotionally. Some more guidelines for expressing emotion. First, we need to accept responsibility for our feelings. This is a key one. Nobody makes us feel anything. There are emotions that we experience and, and that may be a result of somebody doing something that we don't like and, and as a result we allow ourselves to build up that emotion and, and then we but, but that's our feeling. We need to accept responsibility for that. Nobody made you angry. Nobody makes me angry. I'm angry because of things that may be happening, but I'm allowing myself to experience that emotion and I need to accept responsibility for that. We also need to choose the best time and place to express our emotions. Uh, the, the, the equation is, you know, event and then your thought about that, you know, so something happens to trigger that emotion. Then you think about it cognitively and process that and, and identify what that emotion is. And then you can, you know, fully interpret and, and understand that feeling and then take action, not this happened, so I'm going to take action as a result without really thinking about it. You're skipping a couple steps there. So uh, right now may not be the best time for you to express that emotion, express those feelings. So we may need to consider if there's a better time and place for us to do this. As far as managing your, your emotions, we need to first identify and, and manage those facilitative and debilitative emotions. And essentially, facilitative emotions are emotions that help us achieve our goals and that are used in a proper way and, and effective for us. Debilitative emotions are the opposite, then. They're emotions that get in the way of us achieving our goals. So we need to be able to identify and respond to and, and manage those facilitative and debilitative emotions. Uh, we need to understand, in terms of managing our emotions, that thoughts cause feelings. So we need to control and manage our self-talk as it relates to those uh, emotions and, and how we respond to them. Again, this cognitive interpretations and then the way that we talk to ourselves about that in our, in our heads and say, okay, what am I feeling about this? What am I going to do about this? We need to you know, manage and control the, that self-talk and, and those cognitive interpretations. We need to identify and kind of control our rational thinking and our debilitative emotions. There are all kinds of fallacies that we have that are related to emotions, and I'm not going to go through all these individually, but things like the fallacy of perfection, where we expect everything that we do and expect ourselves to be perfect, and when we're not, then we fall apart, and that's not good. Uh, the fallacy of should, falling into that trap of thinking about the way things should be and not the way that they are and dealing with them the way that they are. Uh, and the fallacy of helplessness, for example, where we just have no control, no ability to do anything about anything, so why bother and just just give up now, right? These are all fallacies, meaning they're irrational thought. They're illogical uh, lines of logic. So we need to push them aside and, and recognize the way that they contribute to debilitative emotions and push those aside. Then. So if you have questions about emotion, emotional expression, anything related to it, please feel free to email me. I'm always happy to talk about things in that way. So in the meantime, 
happy communicating.